Okay. Welcome to Luke chapter 17. And this is, a, again, it's a page turner. So I'll give everybody a chance to get there. Get your mouse off the screen, baby. My mouse. Okay, verse one. Oh, was it? Mm -hmm. What's that about? I said, mine says this meeting is being recorded. Do you want to continue? Is there, or is that your screen? That, that, it's recording. On mine, too. Yes. It usually doesn't say that, though. I have to get rid of yeah, it. I think that's a new thing. Who's that? I think it is that we're being recorded. <laughs> it is. I record all of them. So. Yeah. I just I just hit continue and it went away. Okay. Cool. I want to. She said she hit continue and it went away. Okay. There you go. Hey, verse one. <clears throat> then he said to his disciple to the disciples, "It is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him." through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a milestone, um, excuse me, a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. And this is a hard one for people, but let's start with the first one. So when he is saying that it is better for you that, you know, rather than you, you dissuade any, any, anyone from their faith, then you be a stumbling block to anyone who believes that you be the reason that anybody goes, man, I don't want to be a Christian because of those fools then it'd be better for you that a, miles, a millstone were hung around your neck, like big, huge stone and just drowned you. I mean, that, that's a huge offense to God that you would do that. So we have to be really cautious that when people see us and see how we are, that, that they don't want to make a U-turn and not, you know, become Christians or, or, you know, turn away from their religion. And when he's saying, that, and this is the hardest one, if your brother sins against you, you know, and if he asks, hey, please forgive me, you know, seven times in one day, and that, that could be a lot of stuff that he's doing to you. You shall forgive him. And I think most of us struggle with that. Most of us are grudge holders. It is very hard to actually be like, yes, I forgive you. Yes, I forgive you. Yes, I forgive you. But he's telling us that we need to do that. In the same way that you know, yes, I'm listening. I require a lot of forgiveness. I want to make sure Evelyn gets that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. In the same way that God forgives each one of us all day long when we sin against him, when we have thoughts, when we do things, when we're angry, when we're impatient, when we, you know, and God just, he's, and we're like, I'm sorry, God. He's like, I forgive you. I'm sorry, God, I forgive you. He continues to show his mercy and he, he expects that from us as well. <clears throat> Verse five. And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. So the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea and it would obey you. And which of you, having a servant plowing or tending sheep will say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and sit down to eat. But will he not rather say to him, prepare something for my supper and gird yourself and serve me till I've eaten and drunk and afterward you will eat and drink. Does he think, does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. So likewise, you, when you have done all those things which you are commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. And I love this. And this is, first of all, let's, let's start with the mustard seed. You know, we all know that a mustard seed's tiny. And um, people can kind of misconstrue this, misconstrue this, but when you think about that mustard seed, even though it's tiny, that little itty bitty mustard seed makes a huge bush when it grows. And it's the same for each of us. If we have that kind of faith, our faith can grow and 
miracles can happen if we believe and if we pray according to God's will, right? And then I love this. He's saying that, um, you know, the servants are doing what they are doing because they're servants and they shouldn't expect a thanks and they shouldn't expect a big pat on the back. And that's each one of us also. It's like, God's like, don't be expecting, you know, for everybody to be like, oh, good job. Great. You know, it's just like that. You, we're doing what we've been called to do. We're doing God's will. And we should be because that's what he requires of us. And when we do God's will, rather than saying, hey, God, look, look what I did. We need to be like, well, you know, I'm still a wretch and, and I, <laughs> there's still a lot of work to be done here and we need to continue to serve. So. Hey, except when we're the boss. Then we're not to act that way towards our servants, are we? Oh, Paul no. talks a lot about that in his letters. Mm -hmm. About as as Christians, when we're the boss, we are to be we are to be just fall all over ourselves, being thankful and grateful and kind to those of us who, who are our employees or are back then they had slaves. I know people don't like that, but if we were in the position where we had somebody under us. In that case, we're supposed to be kind. But in the case where your boss is not a believer, then we have to we have to act right, Avery. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, we, we're called to not expect any thanks or anything. Right. But we shouldn't act like that if we're if we're in a position of leadership. Absolutely. Uh, that's the way I always talk. Think about that. Yeah. I, I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Verse. Um, What's that? What's that? Yeah, I just said promise. <laughs> verse, verse 11. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem, they passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him 10 men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when you think about it back then, when someone had leprosy, they were completely rejected. They were not to be anywhere near anyone. They had to be like at a minimum of 150 feet away. And they had, when they walked near people, leper, leper, unclean, unclean, to let people know that, you know, hey, don't come near me because it was highly contagious. And, and they were completely, you know, they lived this horrible life. They were weren't able to be with their family or their loved ones. And so these 10 lepers, they were all together. And they were asking Jesus, calling from afar, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go, show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And this is a beautiful picture of, of Jesus healing. <clears throat> and you'll notice that he didn't need to put hands on them. That he, you know, from afar said, hey, go, show yourselves to the priests. So they, as they were walking, as they were walking away, and they may have walked away thinking, oh, great, you know, he didn't do anything for us. They might have been very disappointed. But as they were traveling to the priest, they were cleansed. Verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned. And with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And we all know that <laughs> Samaritans were not popular amongst the Jews. They were just like, the Samaritans and the Jews were like this. They did not like each other. And the Jews Apparently thought that they were very popular with Jesus, though. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So they were like, but. And, but you'll still notice that this Samaritan, in his leprosy, in his condition, the Jews did accept him as they were all walking together as lepers. Because when you're down to that level where, you know, everybody else shuns you, I suppose then, you know, you become a little bit more accepting, right? <clears throat> Verse 17. So Jesus answered and said, were, not, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner and he said to him arise 
go your way. Your faith has made you well. So Jesus is, is, you know, he's telling this guy, you know, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. So Jesus is very disappointed in the, the nine Hebrews that did not come back to give thanks and glorify God. And, it, <clears throat> and when he tells this Samaritan, your faith has made you well, he has been saved. So his faith has given him eternal life. And that is, is way more valuable than just the cleansing of his leprosy. And so that's just such a beautiful picture, again, of, of God's mercy. So I, I love this. I love this. And I'm, and I'm thinking about the, you kind of feel bad for the other nine that were just, oh, great, I'm healed. And they walked away. Their faith didn't make them well. So we know that their end, when it came, probably didn't look too good. They probably ended up down there, you know, <clears throat> verse 20. Now, all about me, 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 huh? Exactly. And, and yeah. we, we have to think about that. Like, I know for myself personally, like, I, I pray a lot. I, I hit my knees hard when my parents are sick, my mom falls, my dad, something happens, or something happens to my husband or his parents or, or anybody in our congregation. We pray and we ask for healing. And then it happens and we're like, yeah, you know, thank you, God. And then, like, we, we don't continue to remember what a beautiful miracle that he's performed for us and continue to glorify him and to praise him to anybody who will listen. It's like that healing of any sort is a miracle from God and we need to just really glorify him. Do, do, you, know, do you guys all know Lorraine, Lorraine Taylor out of uh, El Camino? Yes. She, she, came, she came back and the doctor said this, that didn't work and we can't do anything for you. We just kept praying. Remember, I kept bringing that up. It, yes. it wasn't in the prayer request, but I kept saying, let's just keep praying for Lorraine, praying yes. for Lorraine. Mm -hmm. And you here, last, was it last week? You all know this, right? She, all of a sudden, her heart got into rhythm. And Bobby just mentioned it last week. But, man, I thought, that is huge. Because <laughs> the doctor said, and, and then his, the doctor's answer, sometimes they'll just do that. Come on, man. He told her before it didn't work. And then, and then, but we just kept praying. And, and, uh, and I, I think that's so huge. And like you're saying, Avery, we can't just let that go. That was big. <laughs> yeah, huge. And that's like this virus. They said all these millions of people are going to die. And a lot of people did die. And it's sad that they did. But prayer, nobody seems, I don't hear people say, well, that, that they believe that was the result of all the Christians all over the world praying. And the vaccine, four or five years, they said, that's the quickest we can get it done. They got it done in a year. And a lot of people are glorifying Trump for that, but it's it really, he was the instrument, but, but to push that through. But it was God, and it was all those prayers. I believe with all my heart, it was all the prayers. That did that. And I, I just, I'm saddened that we don't hear more people shout from the mount, mountaintops that that's what has caused all these great things to have happened for us. Like, I, you're so right, Avery. We, we need to really, really think about that and be prayerful and grateful and thankful for all for those things. And look how Jesus just was talking about that one Samaritan came back of a group of 10. They weren't all Samaritans, but the Samaritan's the one that came back. And he's so grateful. And we need to all be grateful all the time. And I, it's that way. I'm sorry. I'll shut up. <laughs> we can tell what, what, what chapters are his favorite in the Bible, right? <laughs> Verse 20. Now, when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Then he said to his disciples, the days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the son of man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, look here or look there. Do not go after them and follow them, for 
as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be. Excuse me. My, my pug just stepped on my keyboard. <laughs> what did you do? You know, when you have dogs and they're over here trying to get up and they step on your keyboard and they mess you up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Or as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will also be in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on that day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so, it will be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed." And you just got to, it just kind of gives me the chills to think about this because as we know, in the days of Noah, he was preaching for many years as he was building that ark because that ark took him so many decades to build. And so he had a lot of time to, to preach the gospel to his neighbors and, and anybody who would listen. And they all thought that he was crazy and they all died. You know, he, he didn't want that to happen and it probably broke his heart to see all of his neighbors die like that. And when I wonder what they think now. <laughs> I wonder what they think now. Eternal lake of fire, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and you think about Lot, and, and he was living in that sinful, horrible city where the angels, the, the men of the city tried to rape the angels and like he offered his daughters and it was just a horrible scene and they all ran out and it just rained from the heavens, fire and brimstone and it killed them all, except for Lot and his daughters. As you know, the, the wife looked back longingly because she was still with the world in her heart. So, I mean, so it will be in the day when the son of man is revealed and this is just, I know that you guys are probably like me where you think it kind of feels like we're coming to this because a lot of things are happening that they speak of in the end of times. And it's just kind of, it's kind of petrifying. Verse 31, in that day, he who is on the housetop and his goods are in the house, let him not come down and take them away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. For whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, in that night, there will be two men in one bed. The one will be taken and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding together. The one will be taken and the other left. Two men will be in the field. The one will be taken and the other left. And they answered and said to him, where, Lord? So he said to them, wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Okay. So he's talking about the end of times. So when that day comes, when, when Jesus comes, when the second coming happens, it's going to be like, some will be here, some will be gone, and, and nobody's going to know what's happening. And he, even Jesus doesn't know when that day will be because they're asking him, when will this happen? And he's saying, wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. And a lot of commentators note that the eagles that he's talking about are really like vultures. So you can see this picture of death. And so when he comes, you want to be the one that he chooses to be with him. You do not want to be the one that's left here to suffer all of the horrible things that are going to be happening here on earth. And, and, and which is what makes Revelation so powerful, which we'll, we'll get to that soon. But so that any, any closing notes on that, Pastor? Uh, be ready. 
<laughs> that's that's the that's the key in it because it doesn't matter. You know, people say there was that Harold Camping. I don't know if you remember him, but he was Family Radio, or I don't know. Mm -hmm. There, there's a lot of people that use family and radio and the same thing, but this guy was something else. And he kept predicting the end. It's going to be this date. And four or five times he did that. And I remember the last time he did it and people were all freaking out. And a lot of it made the news the last time around. I think Harold's gone to home to, well, he's not here with us anymore. We just read about what it is to mislead people. But uh, he, he was hard and harsh and and in all the things that he said. And he claimed to know when the end is. We don't, any of us know when the end is. And they talk about pre-millennialist and post-millennialist and omni-millennialist, but I'm a pan-millennialist. It's gonna pan out exactly the way God wants it to. And we just need to be ready, stay ready, always ready, always ready. And just get up every day. Bill has given us all a bunch of beautiful, uh, 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 Devotional. devotionals uh, from Dove, from Dove that he got from the Dove Network, and 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 just we need to stay ready. We need to always be looking towards God, always on our minds that He's there with us. Like this morning, Jesus calling was talking about that. We just need to always know that He's with us, and we need to stay ready. That's what I would say. I agree. You know, that's that's the key there. Don't try to figure out when he's coming because no, no, no man knows the, end, the day. But we all know that it's coming and we all need to be ready. That's right. what I would say. And, and we may go, go, right we may go. Right. Mm -hmm. we may go before he comes. We don't know when any of us is going to pass and we want to be ready for that also. So just be ready, period. Yeah, any one of us could turn off this computer and take three steps and fall down with a heart attack. We don't know. Yeah, you're right. So All just right. be ready. Be ready.